This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence for your business. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that I haven't discussed in some time. It is my writing process uh, in relation to the comic series that I'm currently writing and in the middle of um, starting uh, the production, which I guess I have started. It's just been a little bit slow as of late, but anyways, that is happening. So as far as the visuals go, I'm just going to be sharing the footage of drawing a hairstyle meme of one of my characters from my comic. His name is Sock, and I'm not really going to talk about much about the process. There's not much to say. I'll just show you like most of the entirety of it. It was pretty long, so I cut down some parts, but I just basically show you guys like the sketch of some of the hairstyles and then inking a variety of them and also just the coloring and finishing steps. So while that will be the background footage here. I'm just going to be talking about a couple of topics of discussion that my dear patrons have suggested about writing comics, my writing process, um, and sp specifically I will be talking about my personal writing process, uh, how I go about uh, the overview and outlining and scripting so far as well as just I will briefly tell you about my formatting and organization when it comes to the writing process so I guess the general broad topic will be comic writing process <laughs> so yes um, it has been quite some time since I've talked about writing and I'm feeling really in the mood to talk about it now because I'm about to jump back into it um, as far as working on my comic goes uh i do it in stages so i haven't written anything new in quite a bit of time like, like a few months at this point because i was doing some layouts for the prologue and figuring out some character designs things like that but i will be jumping back into the writing process because it is not finished by any means and i'm just steadily making my way through it so let's talk about the writing process um, my experience so far and i will also tell you about the beginning stages of how i started writing in general so just so you know like my history and such so the first thing i wanted to mention is that of course i do not have a ton of experience i would not consider myself like a professional writer or anything like that um and i have not technically finished or completed any stories thus far so i'm just going to talk about obviously my own personal experiences my own process and how i have uh, i have approached things so far and what i have learned about the process in all these years that i've been trying to write and what different like what differences i have implemented into the way that i approach things so the brief history of my writing experience is that I have been actually making or I have been very interested in making stories uh, since I was a kid, since I was very young, uh, but I did not consciously clue into this being an interest, like an active interest of mine, um, or I never thought about myself as a writer and never wanted to be a writer specifically. Uh, mostly because my primary interest has always been drawing and making characters and drawing characters. So I just thought that writing was simply a part of that and thinking of stories was just part of that, but it was not my primary interest, if that makes sense. The reason why I say this is because uh, for this reason, I did not do like any research into writing. I didn't really learn formally how to write at any point. Uh, except for just a couple of simple, you know, high school classes and then maybe one or two literature related classes in college uh, slash university. But generally speaking, I started doing my own research and reading about how to write uh, and the craft of it kind of recently, I would say, within the past probably like five years or so. I mean, according to my timeline, that is rather recent because I have been writing the story for a very, very long time, much longer than five years. So anyways... Uh, yes, so the first thing that I've always done ever since I was very young was just make or come up with some sort of character and their setting. Usually the character will come first for me, but the setting will follow shortly after because I think it is really 
kind of strange and in my personal experience pretty much impossible to come up with a character without considering their setting where they live their friends their environment at some point um so those two things just kind of go hand in hand and i just wanted to talk about the way that i think about what it means to make up a character in the first place in the first place or like come up with a character by the way i apologize about the noises in the background here i just got a new kitten and he's a rambunctious little fellow so he's gonna probably make some noise but anyways so i tend to think about characters as externalizations of your own psyche to some degree or not to one degree or another um this doesn't necessarily mean that they're exactly like you or that they're some sort of stand-in for you or that they're supposed to represent you in any way um i just think that when you come up with a character like when you have a tendency as a child to come up with characters i do think that subconsciously you are trying to explore aspects of yourself and your own personality and your own psyche and maybe some of it is just a reaction to learning about yourself and interacting with new people and what you think about yourself, how you think other people perceive you, and just your reaction like in relation to your environment. At least that is how I think I've always looked at it subconsciously without realizing it. And if I look back, um, it only really makes sense because it is fun to come up with a character, but it has to be fun for some sort of fundamental reason. And I do think that the fundamental reason is probably self-exploration and just figuring out like what people are, human behavior. Um, I think they're basically just exercises in understanding patterns in human behavior, whether it be your own or somebody you know, or just the people that you interact with. All right, so let me just take one minute to tell you about this video sponsor, Squarespace. So if I could go back in time, I would definitely host my online shop directly in Squarespace. Unfortunately, I set it up a while ago on a different platform, but you don't have to make the same mistake as I did. <laughs> a feature that is so incredibly useful for an online shop owner is the integration of a square reader directly with your online shop. So inventory can be so tricky to keep track of when doing in-person shows. And I always have to count things and update my shop afterwards. And it's just so time consuming and I always end up miscounting my inventory. But with Squarespace, you can hook up your square reader directly to the Squarespace app and keep track of your inventory while doing in-person sales. It's super useful. Useful. Maybe one day I will have to move my shop. <laughs> we'll see. Needless to say, I also use Squarespace as a hub for all my other art business needs, my portfolio, etc. And it's been super easy to keep up with my portfolio site and keep everything nice and updated and looking beautiful. If you're looking for a platform to get going on your own art business dreams, you can go to squarespace.com and start experimenting with building your own portfolio site. See all the cool features Squarespace has to offer. And once you're ready for your website to go live, you can go to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You can also find the link in my description. And now back to the video. As far as the settings go, I think the settings are you know, just tend to be my general, like they always tend to be stuff that I'm interested in, in particular environments that I find really engaging and just mysterious and intriguing for whatever reason. I've always personally been super attracted to uh, the castle environment. So as like, I mean, I am a big fan of the genre of gothic horror and of course castles and mansions and things like that are a big part of that and for whatever reason it's always been a super attractive setting for me uh specifically I like it when it's remote and you know haunted is also a plus things like that uh there's no particular reason as to why I'm interested in these things it doesn't really even matter and I think that as long as you find the settings that you pick for your characters uh, interesting and engaging to you. That's all that matters. So that's pretty much like the first beginning stages of the writing process uh, as, far as, my uh, as far as my experience goes. And I have come up with so many characters over the years and actually quite a few different settings and worlds, if I can call it that as well. But... 
especially when I was younger, I think I was more exploratory when it came to coming up with different settings and characters, but eventually it kind of boiled down to a couple of main stories where I nested a bunch of my characters into one setting and one story, and I started mo focusing more on those specific um, settings, I suppose, and eventually it almost kind of collapsed into just one. So in some ways, I do think that it's kind of like a distillation um, experiment or slight distillation process where certain ideas just become less intriguing over time, but certain ones don't leave and they have this tendency to just stick in my mind. And by a long period of time, I mean like a very long period of time, like 15 years, you know, that's pretty long, you know? I think the chances are if you're interested in something uh, for that long, then it's probably worth continuing to pursue. So that's at least, that's uh, what I have decided many years ago. And my interest has not faded whatsoever. And if anything, it has only grown in all that time. So yes, now that I have pretty much told you guys like my general experience with writing, how things start, tend to start out for me uh, and how I start fleshing out characters and their settings and whatnot. Um, I will tell you about outlining and turning this idea or turning a character in a setting into an actual story, which is something I have even less experience. Well, I will say I have a ton of experience with coming up with random characters and settings, but turning that into an actual story um, that has a plot and where things are happening is definitely a different situation for me. And that is something I am relatively new to. Uh, so I will tell you guys how I have approached the outlining process so far. So how to turn characters and ideas into an actual narrative. So. The first thing that I had to begrudgingly come to terms with was that conflict really is everything. This is something that you hear a lot um, of people talk about as far as instructions on how to write go. Um, and a lot of people will say that if you don't have a conflict, you don't have a story. And you know what? I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but for the most part, I will say that I think this is definitely true. But I will also say that conflict it really kind of you do have to think at length about what conflict actually means and what you think conflict means so when i this was like several years ago when i was writing stories kind of haphazardly and i did try to make a comic and such and things were happening it's just that they were very um poorly planned but there were certain conflicts and at the time, because I was so, I, I've always had this kind of like a rebellious streak where I didn't like listening to instructions and I've always liked to just figure, stumble around and figure things out myself. And so when I heard things like, oh, you have to have a conflict and you have to have like a three, um, the, like a, what, what's the thing called? Three arc char uh, three arc story um, outline or something like that. I don't know. I've never liked rules in the past especially nowadays obviously my view on these things is a lot more nuanced but um i'm only saying this because i used to avoid stuff like that and i used to avo avoid taking advice and because i enjoyed thinking about my characters and drawing them and trying to come up with stories so much and i thought about things like the necessity of a conflict and the necessity of a characters having flaws to me just sounded annoying because I perceived my characters as not having flaws at the time and I couldn't bring myself to change them because I just liked them the way that they were and I didn't, to me, it was almost like desecrating something holy to me and I just didn't want to make any changes to them. And as far as conflict goes, I, I also couldn't really identify that I already had conflicts in the story as I was trying to write it. To me, for whatever reason, I, I, I guess I thought that something like a conflict was, it had to be external, it had to be something happening, like some sort of literal event happening in the story where somebody dies or some something, some sort of action happens. Like, you know what I mean? There's a difference between internal and external conflicts. And that is the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So 
This is very relevant because I think it's super important to understand that just because a con like a conflict, first of all, doesn't have to be external. So the inciting incident that a lot of uh, writing books talk about, it by no means has to be a literal plot point, an event that happens to a character through external circumstances, like somebody they know disappears or somebody they know dies or someone does something bad to them. It doesn't really have to be like that. Um, and understanding that I think helped me to kind of calm down on that front a lot because for the most part, I had a lot of difficulties coming up with a conflict in a vacuum. Like, I couldn't just come up with something random happening because I perceived it to be random. And unless I had a very good reason for an event to take place, I just couldn't care to sit there and come up with something that would happen just to have a plot. So for me, these were like some of the major blocks that I faced when I was trying to turn my characters and my world into an actual narrative. So in order to fix this and actually start making some progress on this front, I just decided to approach um, the writing process in a bit of a, or the outlining process in a bit of a different way, um, based on many different books I read. And I personally have really found myself mm, appreciating the character driven uh, process. I don't know if there's like a specific name. I, I suppose like character driven um, does the job. Oh my God, my kitty is on the desk and keeps messing things up. Anyways, uh, okay, so I wanted to talk about um, the way that I started approaching writing sp just strictly through the character. So I firmly believe that, first of all, um, internal conflict is probably more important than the external co conflict. So whatever happens to the character via external forces is less important, in my opinion, than their emotional states and what kind of internal wars they have in their head. So that is my number one rule. And I also think that the character absolutely has to change and has to learn something and change a behavior by the end of the story. I know that this might be kind of a contentious point and of course there are so many different stories to tell, there are different ways of telling stories, there are different goals when telling stories. So for me, because I'm so into characters and that is how I chose to focus on outlining my story through the lens of the characters only and then figuring out the external conflicts and events afterwards as it makes sense in relation to the character arcs. I found it to just be logical to really narrow down what it is that the character is going to be learning and what kind of behavioral change they're going to be going through. And this is like probably the most important part of figuring out a story outline to me so far. So there are, like I mentioned, obviously going to be exceptions to this and one of the most I guess obvious exceptions that I can think of is if the main character in your story is going through some sort of corruption arc where they're not supposed to learn anything and they're supposed to double down on their actions even though they are clearly wrong, um, which will eventually lead to their demise. And there are some amazing uh, storylines, uh, stories out there telling exactly this type of story. So um, yeah, those would be total uh, exceptions to the rule that the character has to change or has to learn something new. But of course, you have to understand something like that. I feel like you can't just haphazardly write a story where a character doesn't really go through anything and you don't really know what kind of story you're writing and just hoping that it will um, just come together by itself. You know what? I'm not going to rule that out as a possibility. It's possible that uh, you are communicating with something and by that I mean maybe you have some sort of divine inspiration and you have a story that's just simply being channeled and maybe what you write without planning things out and understanding what you're doing will work out. I think that has most likely happened to many writers and it's probably going to continue happening. But for me personally, that's a little bit too much faith in the process that I'm not quite there yet and I do like to be more meticulous about understanding things. 
understanding the skeleton of what I'm trying to do and planning things out in a more organized way. And to me, maybe at some point that may have sounded a little bit too mm, clinical as far as writing process goes, but I honestly don't think about it that way anymore and haven't in a while because it really mirrors the type of things I like to do anyways. I like to analyze people, I like to read about psychology, I like to read about patterns and human behavior, so for me, distilling things like that about my characters does not seem alien or clinical to me personally, so that is an approach I like very much. So how I ended up being able to outline my story is by first outlining all the arcs of my characters and especially my main characters and the one main character that I picked to kind of be um, the number one. If I had to default to the main character, the most important thing, it would be one. So I, I think it does make it quite a bit easier if you just do pick one because I was dealing for a while with a problem where I had several characters and they were all equally important, they were all equally my babies and I couldn't pick like a favorite or so I thought at the time, but honestly narrowing it down to one if I had to um, pick the main character um, did simplify my process quite a bit and made it a lot easier. Doesn't mean you have to constantly focus on that one character in the story, it just means that you know who to default to if you don't really know where to start or where to end and etc. So yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about what I think uh, about character arts arcs and what I think a character arc actually really is because I'm just, you know, Maybe it's super obvious to other people, but I will say that when I was younger, it was kind of unclear to me what a character arc exactly is. I used to think that it's just like, they do this, and then they do that, and then they do this and that and that, and it's kind of like a plot point thing. Um, that was my first assumption when I learned about character arcs, and maybe that is true. You know, there are different ways of looking at it, but the way that I end up utilizing the most that personally helps me actually um, write the narrative is to focus the character arc specifically on big points in the character's attitude changes based on their reactions to changing circumstances. And you don't necessarily need to know all the changing circumstances. Um, so I'm just going to briefly expand on this. How I was able to deduce any sort of um, any, any one of these attitude changes in the first place was that I know I said that I always start by coming up with the character and coming up some sort of, with some sort of environment and that is true but I think I, I neglected to mention that another huge part of the initial process of coming up with the ideas that eventually cobbled up a narrative was that I would often have scenes like I would often come up with scenes and that's another huge part of the process, I think. So it's a little bit difficult to explain how to come up with scenes because I don't think there is really any specific way to do it. It's just if you come up with a character and if you come up with characters that are their friends or like a group or they are in the same world, when you spend time thinking about said characters and said world, especially if you think about it at length and if you listen to music, which is uh, which is something that I did a lot, especially during long commutes, where I did nothing except for just listen to music with my eyes closed and think about the story slash characters that I'm currently involved with, I will put it that way. I found myself just spontaneously coming up with scenes. And these scenes often were very... Um, like, it wasn't even a narrative, it's just maybe I will think about a relationship between two characters and imagine them interacting and then spontaneously I will get some ideas about what kind of history they had, what sort of friendship they have, or maybe they don't like each other, what kind of personality conflict they might have, and this will all flash as scenes in my mind. Uh, scenes where they're interacting and somehow it seems meaningful. So typically the scenes that I'm talking about that I always tend to come up with are not funny or light or like slice of life 
type of scenes, they're always, they always seem to involve some sort of emotional intensity high point where it's, I mean, more often than not, I will say it's sad <laughs> for whatever reason, but anyways, you get the idea. So the, the gist is that I will, and, and usually it won't be like, you know, when I picture characters, I don't picture them in a vacuum, like in some sort of white space as a drawing. I picture them as a movie, like I will always see a scene as if it's in a movie. So there will be a setting, there will be a background, there will be a time of day, there will be visual elements that I am spontaneously coming up with when I think about these things. So it is not the type of like cute character interactions on a white background that sometimes I will draw or like that you see other people draw. Um, when it comes to scenes, it is a fully formed, like fully fledged scene where you know exactly where they are and I don't know where that comes from exactly, but it just kind of tends to happen spontaneously. So those are some of the building blocks. And like I mentioned, they're not necessarily related. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Sometimes I'll just come up with a cool, cool concept. It doesn't even have to be something between two characters. Sometimes it'll just be some sort of thing that a character is doing or a thought that they have when they are in a certain place, when they're looking at something. I don't know. These are just general examples to give you guys but like i said one of the things that they all have in common is one main thing i will say that they have in common is that there's some sort of emotional intensity involved so yeah that is a major building block for me and so when i sit down and i try to figure out a character arc typically a lot of these scenes will come to mind but you don't need every single one to already be decided to come up with an arc i think it becomes kind of like making a puzzle so when you think about your character basically when you think about your character's personality and maybe their major conflict that is internal like i was talking about earlier like something they're having a hard time with something that upsets them something they think is wrong with the world or with their life uh that would be a major point uh to start with and i i so i don't know if i mentioned this already but attitude changes is how i deal with character arc points so i will write out like character thinks this and then they think something differently and then they change their mind and think a different way and by the end they realize something and then they finally think in this final way which i think is how they should have been thinking the whole time something like that you know um i know that's super basic but i, I think it's a pretty good place to start at least for me it helped greatly to start from that place and i did this with multiple characters and sometimes and of course characters have to go through different arcs you, you don't want every single character of yours to go through something very similar sometimes you might want to utilize a different character in order to contrast some sort of uh into in order to bring uh attention to a contrast specifically between decision making so say maybe two characters have a similar problem but they both deal with it in different ways stuff like that i'm not going to get into it but Basically, after outlining all the character arcs in a very basic way, is what I did, uh, I started to see, I started to just notice parts where these character arcs can actually overlap. And then based on that, because I already had a setting that I fleshed out relatively well in my mind over all the years that I was thinking about my story, um, I know where they live, I know what some of the places are that they frequent, I know... Uh, a bunch of things about the town's history and so just based on that I start to immediately get ideas about what kind of external events can transpire in order to support this character arc that is happening and in order to support these character moments or scenes that I have kind of come up with sporadically over the years and um, I will say that I think the length of Okay, so basically, I guess the next thing that I want to talk about is outlining for one book versus multiple books. I, again, I have never really finished anything and I have never written a story that's one graphic novel or like is concise. So in my case, I'm obviously planning for multiple books. And uh, generally speaking, from my experience so far, I think the length, um, it, it all depends on you're spreading out your character arc across multiple books based on 
how many mistakes you want them to make and how many wrong decisions you want them to make before they finally come to some sort of big solution and you can even have them make some right decisions in the middle somewhere but then it wasn't enough and then they have to fail a few times again and, and then maybe eventually or like finally in the last book they will uh, find out how to behave correctly in order to solve their problems so that that's the general way in which I tend to approach this type of thing so fitting the events uh, of the setting into the character arc is something that tends to come naturally and it is like I've mentioned probably before even in my other videos it is quite a mysterious process and there have been many many very very surprising instances in which just sitting down and doing this work, like thinking about the character arcs, thinking about their their behavior and what changes they're going to make, what their what their issues are and what they think the problem is with the world or with their life and what they're doing about it. Just thinking about these things at length, about the different characters, and suddenly some sort of story just tends to emerge here and there. Like I've experienced that a lot. Things just click into place in the most unexpected ways is how i have experienced it and so far i have about four chapters written and maybe five i think i've outlined chapter five as well but i do have a basic outline for what i'm planning to be uh to make three books and i'm not sure if that's going to pan out because obviously things do have a lot of moving parts and the length is subject to change based on how things go and how long it takes to get through certain parts of the story but yeah hopefully that was a good um summary or like a quick way of telling you guys how i go about from coming up with characters uh, all the way to turning it into a book or a script and an actual narrative outline because this is some of the stuff that i found myself stuck in for many many years and eventually now i have picked up these little things that i found super helpful and this is currently how i approach writing my script so now this voiceover is 30 minutes long and i don't know how much longer i want to make it i was going to talk about the formatting you know maybe just a few extra minutes and i will tell you guys briefly about how i format my story uh so i use scrivener is a program a little app for writing and i think it is the best thing ever to be fair i haven't tried a whole lot of other things uh i used to use google drive and it was a total mess and i would not recommend it and i would never go back to that so i highly recommend scrivener and the thing that i love about it the most is that you have your sidebar with all your folders and your different documents that you can see at all times and you can divide the screen into two portions and have two different documents open side by side and that is the most useful thing ever for writing for me it's absolutely indispensable and it has helped me so so much and as far as the categories slash folders go i so far i am sticking to uh five different categories uh the first one is outlines the second one is characters third is world building fifth is notes and the last one is research research i haven't really used much because i haven't had to do anything yet uh so far but i'm sure it will come in handy eventually if i need to take research notes but so in the outlines you i will have the script the script versions different chapters um and the chronological outline of the events that take place in the story and in the town maybe the town history will also go here uh, for the characters um, subcategory, I will put everything about characters and I tend to organize it not different document per different character, but I tend to group characters together. So I'll have the main characters and then I will have a document that will say, talk about their maybe basic personality traits or things they like, more like profiles. I'll group them into one document and then I will make a separate document for main character arcs. So this is how I tend to divide things um based on groups for some reason i don't like having a separate document with a bunch of jumbled up information about every single character in different documents so yes and then in the next category the world building it's pretty straightforward i will just 
write about at length about how the world works, if there's like a magic system, if there are any groups of people, organizations, uh, their rules, whatever, anything like that, we'll go into the world building section. And then the notes is probably the one I use the most where the first thing I will do is read a bunch of stuff and then sit down and write notes about what ideas come to mind. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to categorize these things right away, so it's easy to dump them into notes that I can read later and then potentially go and update the different documents that are more organized. And I like to read over all my notes because sometimes I don't have enough time to implement everything. Sometimes just reading through my notes and my general thoughts um, will help me come up with new ideas and I will also just keep putting uh, more ideas into notes. And I typically will just do that yearly like i'll have um notes 2020 2021 2022 you get the idea so yeah and then obviously research haven't done any yet but that's self-explanatory and that is how i organize and format my files so far and as far as the actual script goes um is very straightforward. I typically just make a new document for every chapter thus far. I start with a brief outline at the very beginning of the document, so I just know what I'm supposed to accomplish in the chapter. And then I will go point form, beat by beat, about what happens briefly. And then once I finish writing out all the beats about like, character does this, and then something happens. And it's usually character does something or like different scene characters do something or they talk about this or something like that. And then once that basic breakdown is done, I will go back and just expand on each point with conversation and I will divide things by scenes. And a scene is basically like, it takes place in one setting. So you'll have a scene where character A and B are in a room and then they talk about this or like as long as you stick with those characters like i guess that that would be a complete scene where where the next scene would be some sort of time passage or jumping to a different location or jumping to a different character so those would be how i classify scene changes probably the same exact thing as a movie script and i don't get too much into details of describing the setting or anything like that it's mostly conversation and character action but of course i will include a little bit of a description about um the basic established settings such as like where it is maybe time of day any sort of relevant visual details that come to mind i will include right away and then once the script is finished i that's when i <laughs> Um, we'll do the thumbnails slash storyboards for the actual comic. And that is, I've obviously done that a lot before with a different project for Gloamingville. I haven't done it that much so far. I'm trying to decide exactly when I should be doing the thumbnails. It crossed my mind to do it at the same time as I was writing the script, but I do, I'm now thinking like I'm leaning towards just writing the script for each chapter in complete form first and then tackling the thumbnailing. Um, the reason why I consider doing it the other way is because when I write the script, I do obviously picture it in comic format, but it is actually very, very difficult to do it correctly. I find it's like, it's really hard to, for me to estimate the page count when I just write the script. So, um, I am no longer trying to divide it into pages like I was trying to at first. And I'm just kind of rolling with it. I am trying to picture it, but for the most part, the page lengths will, can only really be determined by the time I do the thumbnails. And that is the basic formatting uh, rundown so far. Thank you guys for listening to this video. I hope this was helpful for all of you who are starting to write a comic or are in the middle of writing a comic. I hope that you found something um, helpful in at least part of the video, because I know maybe a lot of these things could be obvious, but it's uh, it's always good to share whatever knowledge I have with you guys. And yeah, so thank you again to my lovely patrons for suggesting this as a topic. It was a lot of fun to think about and it was fun to tell you guys about it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.